up on Ag Week TV. Farmers seem to have a higher rate of Parkinson's disease. We'll look at what could be causing it and what can be done to slow the symptoms. We'll tell you some of the things farmers learned at a big conservation tillage conference in Fargo. And after a tough year, the Ag Outlook for the coming year brings optimism. Welcome to AgWeek TV, I'm Shauna Olson. Herbicide-tolerant crops have made things much easier to manage on the farm. But speakers at the Conservation Tillage Conference in Fargo say a more sustainable, multi-cropping way is likely to emerge. AgWeek's Mikkel Pates has more from the conference. A big conservation tillage conference put on by the University of Minnesota and the North Dakota State University Extension Service touts some of these practices as a way for farmers to be sustainable environmentally and save money. Mother Nature is perfect at, at doing what she does. She has the ability to create the soil environment that can capture the amount of moisture that it receives without the runoff and the erosion. We've got to try and figure out how to get back to those kinds of uh, activities. No water, no roads. Brian Jorgensen grows a wide variety of crops on his 20,000 acre farm in South Dakota. He's been practicing conservation tillage since the 1980s and he's been fully no-till since 1991. That was very uncommon at the time, but practices have changed remarkably since then. Now about 80 percent of the farmers in his area are no-till. Watching each other and, and making changes subtly to our operations and it just those success stories that kept building and, and spreading out. So we were trying to push that rye down. Lee Breeze is a crop consultant. He says it's hard to get people to change how they do things, but he says about 30 percent of his clients are incorporating his ideas. Another third are starting, and a third are very resistant. There, there is certainly a concern about competition with other crops, cover crops and such, in the system as being competitive. And we, we know that there are times of the crop's growth where competition is a significant threat to yield. However, there are lots of times during the season that it is not a significant threat, but we need to change that idea that, it's, that a beautiful cornfield isn't one that has just corn in it, that you can have other things in there and it can still be a beautiful cornfield. Jorgensen says the hard truth is that Roundup drastically increased production, driving a multi-billion dollar industry, but he thinks it's not sustainable. If you are in operation today, under today's current market environment, I don't think we could sustain five years of this current market environment. What has to change to make it sustainable? I, I don't believe that it, without diversity in the system, long term, it's not sustainable. Jorgensen says he knows it's not a popular opinion because it makes farming more complicated, but he believes the market will force people to change their practices. I think if we think soil first, that that change will begin to take root and take place and, and happen. For Ag Week TV, this is Mikkel Pates. The dreaded weed, Palmer amaranth, showed up in Minnesota this fall. It's now in four counties in southern Minnesota. Tom Peters, Extension Sugar Beet Agronomist for North Dakota and Minnesota, says they've been tracking the weed for about two years. He says it'll rob corn yields of 70 percent and soybeans of 80 percent. The weed is from the desert southwest and he says is doing quite well now in the Midwest. There aren't many options for controlling it. Not only is it glyphosate resistant, but it's also resistant to a number of other families of herbicides. And I think that's part of the mystique with Palmer amaranth, that it's very quickly developed multiple herbicide resistance, sometimes maybe four herbicides in the same plant. So that would mean not being able to use glyphosate, uh, maybe a triazine herbicide, a PPO inhibitor herbicide, an ALS inhibitor herbicide. Peters says they're urging all homeowners to scout for the weed. He says take note of weeds that grow super fast, two or four inches a day, or a pigweed that's bigger than the rest, or any weed that just doesn't seem right. He says last season the weed encroached on 35 more counties in Iowa. American Crystal Sugar is completing a $44 million sugar dome warehouse near Chicago. A new sales and marketing tool ready just in time for the holidays. Mikkel Pates explains how it will help the company move sugar more efficiently to where it's needed. 
We're looking inside the dome right now. This screw king bear is 85 feet long and it's about five foot tall. After nearly a year of construction near Chicago, this giant transload facility or sugar dome is almost ready to be filled with sugar. American Crystal based in Moorhead is building it to store sugar close to where its biggest customers need it. Chicago is really a response to having customers in an area that we need to service and service better, faster, and more effectively, but also have the benefit of moving sugar out of the valley at a time where we have the rail car capacity and we're also full on sugar. About 25% of the sugar shipped from the valley goes to Chicago, but there have been problems in getting it there. If you'll remember several years ago, we had quite a bit of trouble getting sugar from the Red River Valley to Chicago because of some transportation and logistic issues around the railroads. And so one of the things that we've been able to do is to put this transload facility closer to the customer so that we can always have sugar available when customers need it. The other benefit is we'll actually be able to reduce the cost structure of di distributing that sugar to customers. The dome is 136 feet tall and can hold 1.3 million hundredweight of sugar. It can unload 24 rail cars a day, one every hour. United Sugars had been looking at this for a number of years and uh, they've been looking for locations. Uh, they knew the market they wanted to be in to do this and the biggest issue associated with finding the spot was finding new rail service. Although American Crystal owns the dome, it will be run by United Sugars Corporation of Bloomington, Minnesota, which is also owned by Mindac Farmers Cooperative of Wapaton and U.S. Sugar Corporation of Clewiston, Florida. This is Mikkel Pates for Ag Week TV. This structure is the third of its type in the world. Similar domes have also been built in Guatemala and Hungary. But this is the first in the U.S. In the past, the company put sugar in box totes in warehouses rather than leaving it in bulk storage. Up next on AgWeek TV, farmers seem to have higher rates of Parkinson's disease. We'll see what some farmers are doing to combat it. AgriValley Solutions can help you get more of the potential you plant with the 360 Y-Drop. You can easily install and remove it on most sprayers. Use 360 Soil Scan to monitor and measure your nitrogen levels throughout the growing season. Nitrogen is applied using Y-Drops, which gives you more control over when and where you apply nitrogen to your crops. When you optimize your nitrogen, you improve crop yields and maximize your return on investment. Contact AgriValley Solutions today to find out more at 888-606-0407. Commitment. You need it to succeed on the farm. It's total dedication to the land, family, and community. It's more than a way to make a living. It's a way of life. You've had it since the first time you ran your hands through the soil, held bale hay, or rode along in the combine. Your commitment. It's as strong as your family's trust. As honest as each long day you put in, and as pure as the opportunity that comes with every tomorrow. It's how we build our bins. With proven design, superior structural integrity, a lifetime warranty, and a promise to stand with you, no matter what storms come your way. The harvest will always be protected, so you can sell when it's right for you, your family, and your farm. Commitment. It's why we can say, there's nothing standard about Superior. Another day of bitter cold temperatures from Grand Forks all the way to Williston, so stay warm out there. It'll never start. It'll start. When the last thing you need is equipment that won't start, turn up the heat with a portable Honda generator from Home of Economy. Rugged, dependable, and quite possibly the best friend you'll ever have on the job. Pick one up today at the guaranteed lowest price, only at Home of Economy, where your dollar buys more. Where do you go for the latest news in agriculture? AgWeek Magazine. Reaching over 30,000 farmers and ranchers in North Dakota, Minnesota, South Dakota, and Montana. AgWeek provides the most up-to-date information on the markets, the trends, and the people who make it all happen. We're your source for news, not fluff. Dependable. Trusted. AgWeek. Subscribe today by calling 1-800-811-2580. 
People in Midwest farm states have the highest rate of Parkinson's disease in the U.S. Although it's not known exactly what causes it, experts say the incidence is even higher among farmers than the general population. Jonathan Knutson looked into the disease and how farmers are affected. David Holt is a farmer, now whose daily routine includes exercise therapy. Two, three. He loves farming and doesn't plan to stop, but he says having Parkinson's does affect him. I don't focus on the fact that I have Parkinson's. I don't tell myself, well, I can't do that because I have Parkinson's. I can't do this. I do everything i always done. Maybe some days it's a little slower to do, but you have to motivate yourself also because there's a lot of depression involved with Parkinson's. Parkinson's affect movement and balance, among other problems. But medication and exercise help Holt stay active. The movements are very dramatic, kind of. Ed Hughesby is a retired farmer and teacher. In 1999, he found he didn't have enough energy for both, so he rented out the farm. He was diagnosed with Parkinson's in 2012. As you can see, I don't tremor an awful lot. Ed credits medication and exercise. One, two, three, four, five. Six, with keeping seven. the disease at bay. You know, it's not easy to get up off of this couch and do exercises. But I think it really pays. And I, th I have a hunch, had I not been introduced to the exercises, had I not been given that, that medication, I'd be lying on this couch a lot more and deteriorating at a more rapid rate. Doctors aren't sure what causes Parkinson's, but some people have a genetic predisposition to it, and it may be worsened by exposure to farm chemicals. It's not entirely clear if it's just related to the herbicides, pesticides, if there's something that gets into the groundwater, certain metals, but certainly herbicides and pesticides are a concern. At age 67, Holt has cut back on the land he farms but he has no plans to retire from the job he loves, and he thinks that helps him fight the disease. By keeping active, you, keeping your mind active, uh, thinking about prices of crops, thinking about what you're gonna plant, where you're gonna plant it, uh, it's a big part of therapy, you might say, is being able to keep your brain active. People in general, and farmers in particular, should be aware of Parkinson's disease. If you're not, it would be a good idea to start learning. For Ag Week, I'm Jonathan Knutson. Early signs of Parkinson's include hand tremors, stiffness, and slowed movement. Those can often be mistaken for other problems, so the best advice is to see your doctor as soon as you have any symptoms. How long will this bitter cold last? Your forecast is up next. And later, we'll have a forecast of another type a look at next year's Ag Outlook. Premier Shortline USA is your dealer for Meridian storage and grain handling. 50 years ago, Meridian Manufacturing designed the first smooth wall hopper bin. This innovation set the standard for hopper bins across North America, completely self-cleaning with no obstructions. Smooth wall hopper bins have become the preferred choice for safe and efficient storage. For temporary grain storage to complete systems, contact Nate or Brent at Premier Shortline USA. Advanced Biofuel for America's diesel engines is clean burning and made from renewable sources like soybean oil. Biodiesel fuel works in any diesel engine, reducing emissions, helping us breathe cleaner air. Biodiesel adds value to North Dakota soybeans, creating jobs, improving the environment, increasing our energy independence. Biodiesel, it starts with soybeans, it's fueling America. Advanced Grain Handling is the original dealer for grain handler dryers, bins, and accessories. With grain handlers, continuous mixed flow drying systems, you're capable of high levels of grain dryer efficiency, drying all types of grains, including seed grain. A family-owned company, Advanced Grain Handling, has licensed and trained service techs on hand whose number one focus is service. They also sell service monitoring systems, do millwright work, and have a licensed electrical shop. Contact Chad today at Advanced Grain Handling Systems, 701-788-8927.
This is Dennis Belisky reminding you we do auctions and we do them well. You've built your operation with hard work and when it's time to sell, all or part, you deserve the best. Details from repairs and preparation to promotion and settlements are not routine. Chances are you'll only do this once, so we'll tailor an auction just for you and get it done right. On site at your farm or added to one of our highly successful Alaris Center auctions, we have the skill, reputation, and integrity to meet your needs with best-in-class commitment and quality service. Find us at resourceauction.com or call 701-757-4015. Where do you go for the latest news in agriculture? AgWeek Magazine. Reaching over 30,000 farmers and ranchers in North Dakota, Minnesota, South Dakota, and Montana. AgWeek provides the most up-to-date information on the markets, the trends, and the people who make it all happen. We're your source for news, not fluff. Dependable. Trusted. AgWeek. Subscribe today by calling 1-800-811-2580. Here's what's going on after about a week and a half of very cold weather, especially focused in the northern plains. Call it the big freeze of December 2016. There are some signs that that's going to actually step back a little bit toward the end of the year. We've got milder weather coming our way this week in time for the Christmas holiday, and it looks like it'll be a lot less stormy. The usual freezing drizzles and light snows, but no organized significant precipitation. I want to take a minute tonight and talk about the polar vortex, one of the most misunderstood, misused used words in all of weather or ag weather, what the polar vortex isn't is a cold snap. What it is is a big circulation of air around the North Pole. There's another one on the bottom side of the Earth, and it's in the upper levels of the atmosphere, and it's not whether you go outside and feel. But it kind of has an influence on our weather. It has two phases. The strong polar vortex tends to lock the extreme cold up in the high Arctic. When the polar jet sometimes weakens, it becomes a little softer, a little lighter. Remember, these are upper level winds. It becomes a little more wobbly. Then you can get areas of Arctic air that break out. And sometimes, like what happened this past weekend, that breaks out into the northern plains, or in this case, a lot of the United States. So in a way, a weaker polar vortex does often determine these cold air outbreaks. But you don't call this a polar vortex. The polar vortex is the upper level wind circulation around the pole, and it's still up there. So the cold weather has arrived, but with the jet stream beginning to shift a little bit, we're going to kick that really cold air back up toward Hudson Bay fairly early this week. The weather across the U.S. for Christmas will remain fairly cool across a large part of the United States. South Florida, Southern California, Arizona escape most of the cold, but a lot of the nation will be cool. But none of the nation will be Arctic this week. Looks like it'll stay fairly comfortable most areas through Christmas. A little rain ongoing right now in the southeast. I don't see a lot of precipitation really as we go through this week except a lot of heavy rain and some snows in the mountains in the Pacific Northwest. As I said, the usual freezing drizzles and light snows, plains, Great Lakes, maybe some localized modest lake effects, but nothing really heavy in terms of precipitation ongoing this week. The cool weather will uh, linger across the U.S. after Christmas, beginning to retreat. The Arctic air, I think, through the end of the year will remain up north. So, in fact, we may actually get a warming trend toward the new year. And as far as any big precipitation goes, the second, the last week of the year, I really don't expect any except perhaps a little bit along the coast. So things are looking fairly quiet. Down in South America, a little more concentrated rain in the central part of South America. South Argentina looking mainly dry. It looks fairly dry across Australia as well. So putting it all back together, it's been cold, but I don't expect much more. And it looks fairly quiet for the next two weeks. If you get right down to it, what's a farmer's job? Well, farmer's job is to feed people. Farmers collectively, our job is to feed the world. At Peterson Farm Seed, we get to have it a little bit bigger picture right in our region. We get to help those farmers that we work with increase their productivity, increase the yields that they get on their farms, and as a result, that more people can eat. Where do you go for the latest news in agriculture? AgWeek Magazine. Reaching over 30,000 farmers and ranchers in North Dakota, Minnesota, South Dakota, and Montana. AgWeek provides the most up-to-date information on the markets, the trends, and the people who make it all happen. We're your source for news, not fluff. Dependable. Trusted. AgWeek. Subscribe today by calling 1-800-811-2580. 
Upgrade your trailer to electric with the Rolltech electric system from AgriCover. Strong, flexible pivot arms and motor mount rotate and telescope, allowing the roll tube to rise and flex over heaped loads. The positive automatic lock is impossible to back off to control the flow of grain. This integrated system uses one wireless remote to operate up to 10 tarps and hoppers, keeping your driver out of the dust, rain, and harm's way. See the Rolltech system in action at an AgriCover dealer near you. When the water's high and your yields are low Cause your fields have no place for water to flow Just one call takes care of it all Call on Field Drainage Incorporated Call on Field Drainage Incorporated Call on Field Drainage Every day across America, excess food is gathered by a network of good people at local food banks, giving hope to millions of children who struggle with hunger. They've earned their wings, and you can too. Together, we can solve child hunger. Support Feeding America and your local food bank at feedingamerica.org. Despite some bumper crops, it's been another tough year for many farmers facing lower grain prices. However, they're looking ahead with optimism at the coming year, but arming themselves with the tools to help their bottom line. That's the focus of the 12th Annual Ag Outlook Conference held by the South Dakota Soybean Association. Michelle Rook has highlights from Sioux Falls. Farmers learn more about the outlook for markets and weather in 2017, as well as how to improve their profitability here at the South Dakota Soybean Act Outlook meeting. The goal of the event is to prepare farmers for the new year. There's concerns about price, concerns about weather, and so we're trying to address those things for them and, and find out what they need for their toolbox going into next year. Sue Martin gave her outlook for grain markets, and Rich Willie had the weather forecast for the 2017 planting season. Colder spring, colder March, colder April, that in turn will lead to cooler soil temperatures going into planting season. That in turn will lead to a slower germination period. Farmer John Phipps shared how agriculture can survive this tough ag economy psychologically. I've been gearing up for what is it I can do to make myself more resilient no matter what happens. Farmers also talk to various ag experts about ways to maximize profits with lower grain prices. It's all about maximizing the return on the acres we have to, to make the best of it in these tougher times. And at the annual business meeting, soybean farmers set policy priorities for the new Congress, including passage of the biodiesel tax incentive. Seems like we get it last minute, so we're very confident that we'll get some sort of a extension, probably uh, lumped into some other package of some sort like we normally do. They'll also ask for infrastructure funding and regulatory and tax reform under the new administration. In Sioux Falls, I'm Michelle Rook reporting for Ag Week. Many of us try to avoid going outdoors when the temperatures drop below zero, but for some jobs, it just doesn't matter how cold it is. Cattle ranchers have to step up their game when the harsh winter conditions set in. Chad Ellingson, a rancher in St. Anthony, North Dakota, says the first challenge with winter cattle ranching is clearing the snow. And with the recent blizzard conditions, he's had to take extra steps to keep his cattle warm. The last few days when the wind has been up and there's been quite a bit of snow, uh, they've, they've needed to take a little bit more shelter. The main thing that bothers cattle is wind and, and uh, if they, you can get them out of the wind, they're pretty comfortable. Experts say a good strategy for dealing with the cold is to feed cattle at night. Heat from digestion peaks a few hours after a meal, which helps the animals get through the cold nights. Still ahead, who's top dog when it comes to herding sheep and cattle? We'll take you to the Yellow Rose Stock Dog Trials. Where do you go for the latest news in agriculture? Ag Week Magazine. Reaching over 30,000 farmers and ranchers in North Dakota, Minnesota, South Dakota, and Montana. Ag Week provides the most up-to-date information on the markets, the trends, and the people who make it all happen. We're your source for news, not fluff. Dependable. Trusted. Ag Week. Subscribe today by calling 1-800-811-2580. Time to demand more. 
With microessentials, you get more from every acre. Through our fusion technology, only microessentials combines four vital nutrients into one powerful granule, ensuring uniform nutrient distribution and increased nutrient uptake. The innovation behind our fusion technology means you'll grow stronger, healthier plants. Microessentials, get more from every acre. Redline, a starter fertilizer developed for corn and other crops. Applied in furrow, Redline offers a solid balance of N, P, and K plus micronutrients. Micronutrients remain soluble for uptake to the growing plant through bonding changes created by the same unique chelating agent found in soy green. Introducing Levisol. Levisol is mixed directly with liquid fertilizer for in furrow application to enhance and maximize nutrient efficiency. United Lease and Finance would like to wish everyone happy holidays and thank you for your business this past year. And we look forward to working with you in 2017. We're happy to work with our clients' lease transactions from inception to close. With leasing, you get flexible payment plans, improved cash flow, great rates, and easy terms. And leasing does not tie up credit. We'd love to go to work for you. Happy holidays from Roger, Troy, and Dale. And we wish you and your family the best and look forward to working with you next year. I'm Jenny Garth, and as a mother of three, I know kids worry about a lot of things. Getting enough food to eat shouldn't be one of them. But here in America, that is a real worry for one in five children. This is unacceptable and something Feeding America is working to solve. Through a nationwide network of food banks, Feeding America serves virtually every community in the United States, including yours. See how you can help your community. Visit feedingamerica.org. Together, we can solve hunger. Together, we're feeding America. The 10th annual Yellow Rose Stock Dog Trial was held recently in Platt, South Dakota. After months of training, some of the most talented handlers in the country came to compete with their dogs at one of the best events in the region. A stock dog trial is a competition for dogs and handlers to move cattle and sheep through a series of obstacles. Organizer Tim Nas wanted a trial close to home, so he started this one. Well, I grew up using stock dogs and I didn't see a trained stock dog until 1997. And it was just amazing, you know, they'll go out and you can direct a dog um, to take the cattle away from you in the arena, turn around and bring them back to you, move them sideways across the arena. I had never seen anything like that. The competition draws handlers from South Dakota, Iowa, Missouri, Colorado, Wyoming, and Canada. It's open to any dog breed, but Nas says typically border collies are entered. This week's photo of the week comes from our Ag Week photographer Cody Rognis of his new son Beckham. He was born on December 8th, a little earlier than expected, but baby, mom, and dad are doing well. Welcome to the newest member of our Ag Week family. Thanks for watching this week's edition of Ag Week TV. Remember, for all your ag news, go to agweek.com. We'll see you next week.